Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on smart stadiums, live from the Netherlands Consulate General in San Francisco. My name is Walter de Witt. I am Innovation Attaché here at the Consulate, and I will be uh, the moderator of this, uh, of this session. To today's um, guests from the Netherlands, from the US, and everyone following us through live stream, a warm welcome, and thank you very much for participating. Um, should you have any questions, um, uh, uh, please enter them into the, into the chat box. In the end, we will have a Q&A and we will address your questions. Um, to, get a better, to get a better insight into smart stadiums and also the future of smart stadiums, um, we will be asking all of the speakers of today uh, one question to get a better insight in what a smart stadium is about and what the future of a smart stadium is about. Um, having said that, um, I think we can go to the first question. Christian, that is going to be for you. You are um, CTO of LAFC, the Los Angeles Football Club. Uh, you've been there for many years, so broad experience in, um, in smart stadiums. Um, with the current COVID-19 crisis, could you elaborate and give us your, to uh, give us your thoughts about the uh, post-pandemic guest experience for um, LAFC? Uh, Christian, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, so the whole post-pandemic guest experience has everything to, be, have everything to do with being a, a touch-free customer journey. And so for us, we're working diligently to make sure that you know, customers have a frictionless experience from the time they come into the stadium uh, while they're in the stadium uh, till the time that they leave. And we're working on, on several technology initiatives to make that happen for them to feel comfortable being there and to actually you know, ensure their safety and you know, health and well-being. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. Um, over to um, um, Maarten, Maarten van der Lee, you are uh, uh, Vice President Marketing and Sales at Tiled Media. Um, you're doing something completely different, focusing on, um, on, on VR. Um, with the Olympics coming up uh, in 2028, VR is going to make a lot of uh, new, new developments, I am, um, I am assuming. Could you tell us a bit more on how to engage, engage fans in the, in the future in 2028 and what role your company is playing in that? Yes, of course. Thank you, Walter. And uh, I think there's uh, also something we have in common with Christian, and that's that we really want to build on a very uh, great fan experience. Uh, and I think uh, VR will only add to that. So we'll never replace the stadium. The stadium is just the number one fan experience, but we can enrich that by actually bringing that stadium experience to people at home who, for reasons that we all can imagine, cannot always be in the stadium and don't always think about just health, but also people that are you know, a bit more senior or have health problems already that just cannot physically go to the stadium that still want to be joining that experience. Um, that's already possible today, but that will develop a whole lot more uh, towards 2028. Uh, thank you very much, um, Martin. Um, um, Ricky, um, you are a vice president, um, a global market development leader at, um, at, uh, at Intel. Intel has been very active in smart stadiums with IoT, artificial intelligence, um, 5G. <coughs> Could you tell us a little bit more about um, what Intel is doing in, in the smart stadium business and, and also what do you foresee for the, for, for the future? Thank you. That's a great question. Good morning, everybody. So um, with regards to the capabilities that we have uh, as an Intel uh, you know, um, technology enabler, our goal is to make sure that we can partnered with companies that are being showcased today and other uh, companies from the Netherlands and the world to make sure that we bring the best fan as well as athletic experiences to anybody who goes and attends what we call them as micro cities because a stadium in itself has a lot of components uh, and it requires a lot of technology for it to be seamless as well as enjoyable, safe and secure. So Intel's been a you know leader in the industry on smart venues, smart stadiums, and we are bringing a lot of cool technology to bear. Uh, uh, not only today, uh, you know, in the post-COVID world, we are also going to be looking forward to something that's totally groundbreaking in LA 2028. 
Thank you very much, um, uh, Ricky. Um, with uh, with the, the third and the final question, I would like to continue with the uh, with the speakers. Uh, we have one speaker that is not here today, so he um, we have a pre-recorded video um, discussion or pr presentation from him. That is uh, Sander van Stiphout. Sander is international um, director at the Johanna Cruijff Arena in Amsterdam. Um, can I ask for the video of um, Sander van Stiphout to be started? In the past, we, we learned a lot of things the hard way. Uh, I mean, we, we had huge problems with uh, our pitch in, in, in the past. Uh, luckily, uh, we overcame those challenges. Um, and and there, was, there was some lessons that I would like to share with you. Um, and um, and I'll, I'll quickly touch upon a couple, right? Um, so one uh, interesting one uh, is the operational mobility center. So it is our area is very busy, uh, like many areas around stadiums uh, all over the world, and it's always a challenge to manage traffic. Of course, this is a, a job for the for the municipality and for all the other road authorities out there. Uh, what we uh, undertook is the challenge to bring all these um, stakeholders together in one room and have them cooperate. And you see that on the bottom left picture. Um, this is of course not very innovative, but actually it made a huge difference already. Now, from there onwards, we start digitalizing the approach more. So we, we try to supply them with overviews, with dashboards, so that they can do their work better. But still, no data was shared. Now we are uh, at, at, the, at the phase where we're creating a common operational picture. We use data sources from all of them, include them in one dashboard, and we can actually run scenarios to, to better fill and, 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 and better perform during the times when people leave uh, the area again. So uh, for us, it was a huge, uh, a huge improvement and uh, it's still un, uh, ongoing. So that's one on, on more on mobility side. On the security side, um, we have a very interesting project going on. It's called the Digital Perimeter. So, when we have large events, um, there's a lot of fences around the stadium for the other perimeter, very common in, in, in the stadium world. But that we would like to get rid of that fenced perimeter and turn that into a digital perimeter. It's of course a vision, it, it's not gonna be finished anytime soon, but on that vision, we were able to mobilize the national police, the city and the largest research institute of the Netherlands. So what we see now is that the National Police runs experiments every single match with new tooling for the police to do their work better and more efficiently. Uh, they, they also use our 5G test frequency. Uh, 5G is not yet rolled out in the Netherlands, but uh, we applied for and have granted the 5G test frequency. And now yeah, we, we do all kinds of tests with, uh, with some things that, that they don't even share, but often uh, things, uh, you know, processes of improvement, how can you signal uh, weapons from a distance uh, already and, and, uh, and have a very secure system. All these kinds of systems are being tested. Also uh, drone, te uh, drone detection systems are being tested. You know, there's a lot of technology out there and it helps us already directly um, and in the long run, of course, this helps the city, the country and beyond, because the lessons learned uh, around the stadium find their way to, to, to the city and the country. Um, another thing we implemented is Tix and Go. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a mobile ticketing uh, uh, solution. It, it facilitates um, also, uh, well, it, it doesn't facilitate it. It goes against uh, counterfeiting and, 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 and it really kills the black market because the ticket becomes valid only when you're in the close vicinity of the stadium and it's linked to yourself. So it's a blockchain uh, solution um, and uh, it solves a, a problem uh, which we have and that is the problem of no show. Funny enough, we're always sold out but uh, for every, we, we are not full to capacity for every match. So there are people that buy a ticket and don't show up. Uh, now we, they can give the ticket back to the platform and we can give it out, or Ajax can give it out again uh, to somebody else who is willing to go. And, um, and, and to get rid of that no-show is important also for the, for the catering uh, revenues. Yeah, 
what we are trying to cater for is is the trip from home to home, right? And and of course that is very difficult because we it it's not our territory. Uh, it's all stakeholder management, um, and, uh, and 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 part of these processes we we facilitate and, and some we have very limited influence on. But nevertheless, it determines the experience of the fan, and it also determines whether or not the person had a good evening and whether or not he will return, especially for events, uh, where fans uh, tend to be a little bit less loyal than uh, when attending football matches. So um, we are continuously looking at, you know, uh, hiccups in, in that trajectory and improve it. And, um, and, and the, 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 the improvements that, that are uh, very visible right now are, is an improvement of the operational mobility center that I shared where we're trying to manage the, the traffic in the close surroundings of the stadium. Uh, we also have the, the mobility portal. So which um, if you log on to mobility portal, it will design the best trip for you to the stadium. Uh, if you type in uh, Johan Cruyff Arena on Google, uh, everyone arrives uh, at the front gate, uh, which is very, very much undesirable. So, um, and, and through that mobility portal, we actually direct you to the right parking spot and we reserve that parking spot for you. And that means if you come from the south, you get a parking spot on the south side. So you don't have to wander through the stadium area where you're in a constant traffic jam. So uh, this way, we're trying to optimally fill the area and also uh, trying to optimize everyone when they leave the area and optimize that process. Um, and that works quite well. That, that In fact, that mobility portal has now, by now find its way to the city as well. Um, and they use it also in other parts of the city. Sander, thank you very much for your uh, contribution. Looking forward to seeing you in person and hear you talk about it uh, um, um, uh, sometime, uh, sometime later. Um, the next speaker will be uh, Christian Lau, CTO of the LA Football Club with the beautiful um, uh, stadium of, uh, of LA. Um, 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 Christian, you will be talking more about the uh, post-corona consumer um, experience. Uh, quick question before you start your presentation. When hearing the arena talk about blockchain, drones, um, uh, traffic management, are these all things that you are working on as well at uh, LAFC? Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're actually, um, we already have drone detection technology. Um, the California Highway Patrol is our security partner at the stadium. So we have the ability to bring down drones if we need to. Um, we won't talk about how, but it's very interesting. And then when it comes to traffic management, uh, we are definitely focused on that heavily. We've got some systems rolled out today. Uh, we're, we'll be deploying 5G technology and connectivity to allow for an expanded reach around uh, traffic and parking. Thank you for this uh, for for this um, 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 explanation from your uh, side. Um, please continue with your uh, start with your presentation uh, that you uh, that you have. Thank you, for Christian. Yeah, sure thing. So you know, going back to my original comment about the the touch free customer journey, uh, you know, there were several things that we were working on at LAFC at the start of our season. We actually got two matches in before we had to shut down, and so. You know, a lot of the technology, luckily, that we have is uh, already in place, and it just aligns well with the whole, you know, post-pandemic guest experience strategy, uh, as I mentioned. Um, you know, some of the big things that we're working on these days, we've launched uh, facial recognition ticketing. Uh, our partners on that are Clear and Ticketmaster, um, so you're able to actually come into our stadium using just your face. Um, we got two matches into that, like I mentioned, and so we expand, you know, we're going to expand that. Um, we had it at one gate. We're going to expand that to all of our gates. We have a, a new access control partner from Austria that will be building out the ability to have facial recognition um, sensors on all of our turnstiles, for example. So that'll be coming for uh, 2021. Um, and then we're also going to expand facial recognition into point of sale. Uh, for concessions and merchandise. So we have the ability to do age verification and payment um, with your face. Um, so we're working through that now and we hope to have that in the venue in 2021 also. And so, you know, a couple of big things around biometrics. We think that biometrics are the future. And then when you start to tie in things like 
Um, we're working on a passive security system, for example, that allows a natural walk through um, the gate without metal detectors or having to divest any of your personal items like you do today, uh, not unlike an airport, right? And so when you tie in those passive security systems with um, facial recognition ticketing, you're literally walking into a venue, uh, not unlike a retail store. And so we're working on that. We hope to achieve that sometime in 2021, but we're, we're working diligently with partners to, to make that happen. Um, Another big area for us and all venues really, because we, we talked to a ton of venues around the world um, and we've had to reimagine our concession stands. And so the idea that you have the ability to walk up, order food, we'll prepare it for you, that's kind of changed. Everything will be prepackaged. And mobile ordering from your mobile device is gonna be a huge play. That's, that's gonna be the key moving forward. Um, and not only for food and beverage, but also for merchandise. And so we're working on that now, but we'll have that all of our, our concepts in the stadium um, with the ability to, to obviously check out using contactless. So, you know, Apple Pay, Google Pay, uh, potentially Venmo and some other things. And so we're working on that now. Um, IoT is a huge deal for us. Um, when you think about customer facing areas, um, you know, backups at concession stands, which we hope to eliminate with mobile ordering, um, but restrooms and, you know, just common spaces, you, you generally have crowds and, and it can be, you know, challenging. And as we focus on physical distancing in the near future, probably the next 12 to 24 months, that will be a reality for everyone. Um, you know, we've got IoT systems where we can monitor inventory of soap, hand sanitizer, paper towels, toilet paper, uh, you know, those types of things. We're even looking at a system that shows the customer which stalls are available in restrooms. Um, so we're working on all of those things now to, to make the customer journey uh, as frictionless as possible uh, and also making them as comfortable as possible. A uh, couple other things that we're doing, um, crowd intelligence is something that we're focused heavily on these days. Um, we're starting to align and sign up new partners to build out our crowd intelligence stack. Um, and that has everything to do with safety and security. A lot of it's, you know, not really customer facing. Some of it is, we have some back of house operational requirements here in California around physical distancing and making sure, you know, that we have, um, you know, as little uh, crowds bound up as possible. And so we're, we're working through that now and then we'll have a customer facing component. We're hoping to give messaging on screens in the stadium as well on, on you know, the mobile device about, you know, availability of restrooms in different areas and where there aren't, you know, huge lines and that type of thing. So we're working on that. And then, you know, going back to 5G connectivity, um, you know, we will be rolling out 5G this year. We'll be adding that to our DAS. So we, we already have uh, a distributed antenna system with all four major carriers uh, in the U.S. on it, as well as a, a best of breed Wi-Fi network. Um, and so when you couple all of that connectivity together, it gives us a huge opportunity to do a lot of things because our backbone is very strong um, and our connectivity is exactly where it needs to be. So um, you'll start to see more things, not only in the stadium, but around stadium, as I mentioned before. Uh, traffic management, parking control, um, the ability to have better connectivity for music festivals, which we also put on at Bank of California Stadium. And so we're working through all of these things now. Uh, some of it was pre-pandemic. Some of it will be uh, shut to the forefront because of the pandemic. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. That is a great insight from uh, LAFC on, uh, on smart, uh, smart stadiums. I did notice that we misspelled your name on the on the screen. We uh, we we will uh, we will adjust that as soon as uh, as soon as possible. I don't know if you've noticed, but I saw it from here. I did not. <laughs> uh, okay, but uh, we'll definitely change that. Um, to the next speaker, Maarten van der Lee, Vice President, Marketing and Sales at Tiled Media. Um, I will give the floor to you now. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, I'll actually dive into uh, one technology that we are offering. And at Talt Media, it's our mission to deliver uh, the ultimate immersive experience. So just 
let me just take you back a little bit into the trends we see with VR in the last three years. Uh, there are three main trends. And the first one is actually that three years ago, the VR headsets were rather low quality. They were still wired and quite expensive. And um, in the last three years, they've actually matured a lot. They can actually stream very high quality VR. They're mobile, so you don't have to hustle with wires anymore and are actually much more affordable. For about $200, you have a pretty good headset. And also the individual, the experience was very uh, solistic, very individualistic uh, three years ago. While today you can actually do stuff in VR together with friends. And thirdly, the, uh, there was a possible back in the day to stream VR. You really had to download uh, content on your headset. And that mean, meant there's always uh, some time you have to wait before you can watch content. Now today you can actually stream VR, meaning you can watch content instantly. Next to that, there are also uh, companies who are now adopting this uh, trend of VR, uh, especially during COVID. They have seen it's quite hard to bring a lot of people together in a close room at the same time. So they are now looking for new ways to uh, give fans an experience that they can enjoy together. And one of the major milestones of that was actually Billie Eilish that did a uh, concert last year on Oculus. Uh, and you can see actually one of the comments of the uh, visitors was, regardless of the camera angles or the stream inconsistencies, the best part of the experience was interacting with everyone around me. And this guy actually spent an hour talking to a total stranger, but enjoying the concert together. So these kind of uh, opportunities are now available and, 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 and companies can actually uh, benefit from this. Also, you see artists actually noticing this. Uh, only about a month ago, this new venue was um, created by uh, Melody VR, where they uh, hosted uh, John Legend um, presenting his new album in a concert for people to be watching live. And also about two months ago, Apple decided to take over Next VR uh, for about $100 million uh, US. Uh, and Next VR was a company that uh, offered live uh, VR experiences of sports like uh, NBA matches, as well as concerts and uh, comedian shows. So uh, this is really showing that next to Facebook who was already invested in Oculus and has also uh, rumored to develop a new uh, glasses. Uh, now Apple is also investing heavily into VR. Uh, but if you look at streaming, actually there's a big challenge at the moment. Uh, on one end, people really want to have higher quality, at least 8K when they watch VR. Well, actually the common legacy way of streaming VR is only 4K. This sounds great if you have a television at home that shows 4K. But if you watch 4K on a headset, it's just looking five inches in front of your eyes. It's just not good enough. Um, and it's ridiculous because actually, actually VR cameras can produce very high quality VR. So why don't we have it yet? Well, VR streaming actually consumes a lot of bandwidth. So it's a lot of video data that needs to be streamed over regular networks, sometimes also to areas uh, that are very rural and that have a low internet density. Um, and mobile networks are limited. Uh, it's, even with 5G, uh, that density can be high in certain small areas, but in other areas, still people need to be reached. Uh, and then secondly, the hardware in VR headsets actually doesn't support streaming beyond 4K. Uh, they are actually being developed. There are some new headsets that can uh, offer higher quality, but most common affordable headsets don't have that option yet. So at Telt Media, we solve this problem by offering uh, patented software that can stream very high quality 8K VR videos. Uh, two existing 4K devices over existing networks. And we do this actually by uh, uh, decreasing the amount of bandwidth that you need to stream video by 75%. Uh, and this actually allows you to uh, add new features like social VR, where you can sit and watch the stream together. And overall, this is a very good uh, adding uh, addition to your return on investment because you can reach loads more people with higher quality. Companies that we work for at the moment are BT Sport, Intel, uh, Sky, and others. Um, and uh, to give you a little example, um, last year we did the FA Cup final at Wembley Stadium with BT Sport. They set up two 360 cameras uh, that people could watch on different types of devices like a VR headset, but also mobile phones and tablets. And um, there was uh, a director switch stream, meaning that the director um, actually decided which stream 
from which camera viewpoint was being watched by the user. Uh, at the same time, the original audio comments were integrated, so they were watching the game as if they were watching it as a uh, regular uh, football game in terms of uh, commentary. Um, and what's also great about this is that the uh, actual content was streamed via a CDN uh, provided by Akamai. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network, uh, and it actually allows to uh, uh, offer this stream to uh, a lot of people at the same time, so it's very scalable. Another example is uh, outside of uh, uh, sports, but also in a, a venue where you bring a lot of people together. And that's actually a conference. Uh, we did this also in close collaboration with uh, Intel, who uh, was uh, one of the main uh, parties uh, showing uh, host and uh, hosting a lot of speakers uh, during the IBC conference in Amsterdam uh, last year. There we did five days of live streaming together during that live conference. Uh, there were also two cameras set up in totally different rooms. Um, and users could actually access those uh, images via a, a IBC 360 Live app. As you can see on the slide, there's many companies have been involved from Google to Intel to Akamai, Oculus, uh, to make this happening. But the great thing about this, all this technology is already available. And if anybody is interested in this, it can be set up in a matter of weeks. Uh, also, what was interesting, because we used the CDN, uh, we made the streams available worldwide. So people who were based in the US could actually um, uh, open up the app and be present at IBC in Amsterdam at the same time. Also, it was user switch, meaning that the user could decide themselves uh, which camera viewpoint they wanted to watch it from. So we got a lot of great customer uh, comments. I think one of them I'd like to highlight is the one of uh, Andy Beal, the chief engineer at BT Sport, who said he was really surprised how well it worked. And they are really at the forefront of always introducing new tech into media. So uh, amazing them was really cool to us. Um, so very briefly, how does it work? Well, if you send a regular stream, which you can see seconds, here, see here uh, of a 360 video. Uh, yes? 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds, okay. So what we take is we take only a picture of the total frame and that's about one eighth of you see in total. And then we cut up the entire frame in tiles and we only stream what you see in very high quality and all the rest in low quality. And because of that, we are able to save 75% of bandwidth. So I'm just going to go to the end because uh, if you want, we can discuss a lot of uh, possibilities. But uh, if you're interested, please download our demo. It's available for mobile. So you can just find it in the Google Play Store as well as in the App Store. Or if you want, we can also have one available for you on Oculus Go or Quest or other headsets. So please contact me if you want to have uh, a demo or any other questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Martin. Uh, very impressive as, uh, as what you are doing. This this is going to change how we uh, how we watch television, how we uh, how we see sports and other events in the in the in the future. Thank you very much for your presentation. The next speaker will be uh, Ricky Handa. Uh, Ricky is Global Market Developer Manager at um, Intel. Uh, Ricky, um, could you please start with your presentation? And thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you, Walter. So, uh, you know, the, the capabilities that, uh, you know, Christian and, and Martin were talking about with regards to enabling uh, a fan experience, enabling, you know, a, a great experience for athletes. Uh, it's something that we at Intel feel very proud of, of partnering with companies like them and organizations to make sure that we bring these kind of technologies to bear. And as I had indicated earlier in the intro, uh, you know, Intel's all about providing the best technology to the partners that can take uh, innovative solutions to market. Um, you know, with that, I have a few foils that I would like to share with you. These are around what we would consider as micro cities. And micro cities are nothing more than, uh, you know, stadiums because they are literally an experience which entails parking, which entails security, which entails retail. You know, it entails an experience that, uh, you know, you don't get in any other venue for that, for that matter. Uh, so on the smart venue solutions, Intel has been an innovative leader in creating capabilities. So with, with those capabilities come in, you know, from what the guiding principles are. So if you were to look at the day of the guest, uh, you know, what would a guest be looking for when it uh, comes to their experience in a stadium? They want to make sure that they have 
the ticket ready. You know, they they want to travel to the stadium, so they want to have the best experience in making sure that they are appropriately parked uh, near the venue. Uh, they don't want to get themselves inconvenienced for walking miles and miles. Uh, in addition to that, they also want to have a very seamless experience getting into the stadium with appropriately active and passive security measures in place. Um, and if you were to look at, you know, what what they are looking for, uh, they want to make sure that they, we as solution providers and technologists can fix their pain points, you know, around queues, uh, what the entry and exit would need to be. They want to make sure that, uh, you know, they they pay more for upgraded experience uh, so that they are, they feel special when they are in this particular arena. Um, they also want to make sure that they feel safe, uh, you know, safety in this uh, you know, post-pandemic world is going to be of utmost importance, as we have been talking about in the in the session today. And they also want to make sure that they have a very personalized and an enriching experience. Uh, you know, for uh, a lot of fans who attend football games or basketball games, this becomes a very annual ritual for them. But there are a lot of events, especially Olympics, which uh, uh, only happen once every two years or four years, depending on winter or summer. And Intel's being the premier partner with the International Olympic Committee, we want to make sure that the experience for the fan is terrific when they get into a stadium, as well as the experience for athletes is terrific because they also want to feel special. They also want to feel and perform at their best when they are in a stadium. So with regards to that, some of the technologies that we have today, uh, as we have been talking about, uh, uh, you know, we call this stadium of the future goals, but there is a lot of things that are already implemented. And you can see from, uh, from the capabilities that I'm showing here, you have things related to facial recognition. How do you utilize biometrics to make sure that the fans are able to get in and out uh, easily without uh, being inconvenienced? How do they go into the smart venue to make sure that they can have uh, a terrific experience around uh, what purchases they want to have. You know, how is their retail experience? Is it responsive? Is it touchless? Is it safe? Uh, you know, is it enjoyable? Because uh, a lot of fans bring their children along with them and it's a very family experience for them. They also want to be connected and engaged. Um, how do we provide the experience that, uh, you know, that Christian was talking about earlier with regards to, you know, having 5G connectivity, having Wi-Fi connectivity so that, they are able to share their experiences live with their families and friends who are not able to attend these kind of events. And similarly around, you know, security, which is active and passive both. We want to make sure that we provide a great experience for these fans that come into these buildings. So how do we take that security, that connectivity, uh, you know, and that fan experience to ultimately help stadium operators increase the revenue? Because ultimately this is a, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, it's a business that requires to have optimal level of uh, comfort, safety, as well as features to provide the best experience while in turn, you know, making or generating positive revenue for their for their team. Um, if we were to talk about something that is today's focus uh, in, in smart stadiums and smart venues, we touched a lot about this earlier in our conversation. You know, we want these places to be connected. We want these places to be smart secure and safe. Uh, and there is a lot of work that we are doing with our partners around video analytics, making sure that we are able to use uh, artificial intelligence and computer vision uh, in providing uh, what we call market-ready solutions that are around social distancing today uh, that might be used for uh, some other type of analytics in the future because uh, I really hope that uh, pandemic is very transient. So you will have transient or temporary capabilities that are implemented in these venues. But as we move forward, these transient capabilities are going to take more around the permanent side of the equation wherein you can use video analytics for doing, uh, you know, providing better and richer experience for your fans. We touched upon smart <laughs> and touchless retail. Uh, you're talking about the entire experience all the way from a restroom uh, over to the lines at a particular hot dog stand or lines uh, to purchase merchandise that is associated with a specific team that you are a fan of. Um, we provide solutions and capabilities around digital signage uh, to make sure that you know, you're able to offer a digitized menu of offerings that you have if you are a retail organization and also 
a, a touch experience for people who are looking for wayfinding uh, in a stadium or in a venue. Uh, additionally, as, uh, uh, as Martin was talking about, fan experience is very important to us. And at Intel, utilizing our technology and organizations that we have, which are called Intel Sports, we bring this 3D and VR experience to our fans in their living rooms. And we want to make sure that we continue providing the level of focus that's needed in order for a fan to experience as though they were physically in the seat in a stadium with the entire immersive experience. Thank so what does much, tomorrow's everybody. vision look like? Thank you very much uh, sure. for, your, uh, for your presentation. Um, we did get a couple of questions, so I would like to move to the, uh, to the question uh, part. If there are any uh, questions from the online audience, please still feel free to, uh, to add them. We have, uh, we have about 10 more minutes uh, before, we, uh, before we have to stop. Um, one of the questions that we got, and that basically is a question to each and every one of you, um, are there any smart uh, stadium developments that you could see in the 2028 Olympics that are not there at this moment. Um, let's start with uh, Christian. Anything looking, looking into 2028 um, that might be coming, which is completely unique? Yeah, you know, I, I think, um, you know, for the most part, there's, there are things that are happening now, especially around biometrics that I think by 2028 will be commonplace. Um, but when you think about, you know, things such as drone delivery, in seat ordering, those types of things, um, it sounds crazy, but, you know, we've, we've started to focus on that a little bit. And obviously the FAA is involved here in the U.S., so that, that kind of puts the kibosh on certain things. But, you know, as Amazon and others start to do, you know, drone delivery pilots to homes, we're looking at doing something similar to NC, but you know, that, that's kind of a flight of fancy at this point. Yep. Ricky, anything from your side that you see for 2028? What Intel is we do. investing in now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and some of the things that I touch upon in the spoil that is highlighted in tomorrow's vision, we want the smart venues to be aware. They want, we want them to be automated and able. Um, and with that, you would probably see, you know, a, a, a whole different experience when it comes to communication technologies in, in the stadiums. Uh, we are also going to see a lot of immersive experiences, not just in virtual reality, but what we would call merged or augmented reality utilizing holograms. Uh, you know, you could be uh, interacting with these holograms. And then in addition to that, autonomous assistance to, uh, to the point earlier with regards to drone deliveries, we would, we would see a lot of robotic uh, you know, automation in stadiums wherein you are able to uh, get help through autonomous devices. And they could be uh, humanoid robots or they could be any kind of robots, you know, whether it's drones or, or AGVs or AMRs. And then a final point, uh, we would also like to see you know, these particular stadiums to become carbon neutral and self-sustaining. There's a lot of work being done around the smart buildings uh, for net zero. And I think that future is going to be very bright. Thank you very, uh, very much. Um, uh, Martin, for you, um, a, a different question, which is kind of related uh, to uh, 2028 and looking into the future. Uh, the question is, how is Corona affecting your business? Um, where would you see, fa uh, see fast technology developments in VR and other technologies that you are working on as uh, as company? Interesting question. Thank you so much. Um, COVID uh, and a global pandemic has uh, impacted the global uh, VR business. Uh, at Alt Media, we are very strong in live streaming. So at the beginning of the year, we also took a hit uh, because the live events that we were going to stream uh, were all cancelled. At the same time, uh, our overall business, uh, business results will, uh, will be great um, because um, yeah, despite the new regulations, um, uh, people still want to be together and have new experiences. And the advantages of having uh, virtual streaming actually uh, make sure that people can enjoy sports still in a very safe way. Um, how will this develop? I think that um, VR and AR will converge more uh, into a, let's say, a virtual or one augmented experience. Um, and uh, adding, uh, like, like Christian said, 5G to the mix also will 
make uh, uh, production very interesting because now you can get mobile production on site. Um, and that will also bring fans closer to sport because they get closer to the players, to the tactics, to the field. They can almost touch it and feel it. And I think that's uh, what fans want. Thank you. Christian is the CTO of uh, LAFC. Do you see this as, uh, as a threat or is this uh, an opportunity for you, what Martin is talking about? Uh, no, I, I think everything's complementary. I, I don't see it as a threat at all. Yep. Yeah, may I just add to that? I think uh, going to more towards uh, more towards a hybrid solution is something we'll see. It's the same with radio and television. Uh, when when television came, people thought radio would uh, would die, but uh, actually now radio is there, uh, and adding uh, sales um, uh, sales uh, of ads on radio is increasing every year. It's just a different type of medium with a different reach, but it will never replace the stadium because the stadium has the number one fan experience. Uh, but if fans cannot go to the stadium, what's then the next best thing that they can still enjoy that experience from that club? All right, thank yeah, you. Yeah, exactly um, right. Uh, Ricky, as uh, Intel working in, in, in all over the world, um, question here is, um, would it be something that the Dutch could learn from the U.S. approach and vice versa? Could the U.S. learn from um, how we are doing things in the Netherlands? Um, could you please elaborate on, is it about technology adoption? Yeah, about, about technology development for a smart stadium. Uh, I think, uh, you know, everybody has their own strengths with regards to what we are doing, uh, you know, around smart stadiums. Um, what I have noticed is that, uh, you know, our uh, smart venues in, in the U.S. have taken a very proactive approach when it comes to social distancing, when it comes to uh, making sure that they get the fans back in the seats, uh, you know, utilizing capabilities around uh, temperature uh, checking. We we partnered with some companies uh, in the United States that are actually looking at creating capabilities, utilizing computer vision for detecting masks, whether the fans are wearing masks or not, and they can be identified. Uh, so those those have been a little bit more proactive experiences in the United States. Um, in in our partners in Europe, uh, you know, particularly in Netherlands, you know, one of the biggest uh, themes that we have noticed is. Uh, you know, around capabilities that can help run the stadiums more efficiently, uh, whether it is, you know, utilizing, as I was mentioning earlier, carbon neutral capabilities around net zero, uh, net zero smart metering capabilities, uh, providing uh, a type of alternative energy or a fuel technology in the stadiums, whether it is fuel cells, whether it's solar, whatever it is. Uh, that's kind of like what the focus has been in the smart venues in in, in Europe, uh, in in particular, you know, in parts of Netherlands as well. So we we kind of like see that there is a bit of a you know uh, um, a goodness from both sides of the both sides of the ocean. And uh, what our goal has always been is to make sure that we can partner with the best uh, technology solution providers in the world to come up with uh, capabilities that can not only be applicable to the United States uh, but all around the world. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ricky. Uh, question for uh, Christian. Um, about 80% of the audience um, at LAFC is between 18 and 34. How does and did this affect the thinking about incorporating technology in the stadium, this very young audience that you have? Yeah, so that's, you know, if you think about it, uh, you know, facial recognition ticketing, for example, um, has been really well received because we do have a fairly young audience. Um, you know, they are really interested in doing things that are, that really eliminate friction for them and, and provide some level of, of convenience. And so you think about contactless payment, for example, um, you know, our use of Apple pay is huge. I mean, we're like 26% at concessions and about 34% at retail uh, for merchandise. And so, you know, all of that's, factored into the fact that, you know, younger audiences tend to be, you know, over indexing on, on mobile devices and that's how they want to interact with us. Thank you very much, um, Christian. That um, almost brings us to the end of this, uh, of this webinar. Is there anything um, you, would, you would still want to mention, you want to say before we uh, go to the uh, closing down of the session? Martin, Ricky, Christian. 
And if not, then we covered all the um, all the all the different angles. Um, would it be okay to, um, if requested, to share your contact information um, with um, with guests that that are interested in that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's great. Um, then, of course, I would like to thank you very, very much for to participating in today's uh, session. Your contribution has been uh, has been great, and I think it has um, given um, many people a completely new insight into what smart stadiums are about and ne new technology that is uh, that is being uh, that is being uh, developed. So, again, thank you very much. It was great talking to you. Um, for now, uh, in about 15 minutes, we will go to the next session, Preparing Mobility and Infrastructure for Large Scale Events. And my colleague, Jan Top, will be responsible for that uh, session. Again, uh, everyone, thank you very much and have a great day. Thanks.